we're going to the grocery store. Wow, a grocery store in Canada. What right happens early. here? We didn't really have much to eat How last night, so I'm trying to find things from Canada that Chris hasn't tried before. Eggnog. So far, we've put eggnog on the list. What the hell is eggnog? Pumpkin pie. Poutine. Poutine. Yeah, I want that. I can't get that at the grocery store. Yeah. Um, if you guys can think of some Canadian things that he's probably not tried, leave some comments. Do you have butter tarts in England? I don't know what that is. Okay, I guess that's another one. <laughs> Away from the cheese. Yeah. You can get cheese anywhere. Bell cream. Oh, I've never had this brie before. <laughs> brie. Oh. <laughs> they have oat milk eggnog. <laughs> That's so cool. It doesn't even have eggs in it. But I'm gonna try that. We gotta get a pumpkin pie. What is this? Pumpkin pie. We'll get a half one. What have you found now? There's eggnog and then there's cocoa nog. What is this? <laughs> dairy free. Let's kick off the festivities with so delicious non-dairy holiday nog. Like wow. A literal gingerbread house kit. Have you never uh, made one before? No. <laughs> I, I had no childhood. <laughs> oh, this one? Yeah. Classic, I original? That. Maybe that one. Get What's a small one. I don't think you're going to like this. it, to be honest. Yeah. Lady de Poulet. Yeah. Oh, eggnog. Yeah. Put some of your gin in it. Oh, shit. Oh, God, no. <laughs> Rum. What the heck is this? It's all Canadian tradition. Mm. I didn't realize North it was Earth. a Canadian thing. I figured you would have <laughs> had it before. Oh, England doesn't have anything. We only have good things in England because we don't have eggnog. What's this one then? Oh, light. What not to say? Love and romance. A compendium of Christmas. the worst possible things you can say out loud. <laughs> Number one, do I look fat? No, I've lost six kilograms. Number two, do you like my family? Number three, <laughs> do, you, like do family? you love me? <laughs> oh God, what's he found? <laughs> Wishing you a possum Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> this is very North American. Okay. A bag with no handle. Well, you, you use like plastic, don't you? I feel like I'm in like Shawshank Redemption. What? Because there's a scene where the man works at the, the supermarket and he puts, the, puts things in a bag. <laughs> So. True North American experience. How I learn about North America, I don't know. Sure, <laughs> What are you most excited about eating? Anything but the eggnog. <laughs> you can get the brie. I've never had brie you before. You don't need brie. It looks so you good. You have this, it every this day. Brie, cheese. <laughs> Shut up. What a fine idea. What a fine food. <laughs> My sister's here now, hey! I brought lots of goodies from Japan, but I wrapped most of them because it's Christmas, so you gotta wait for those. That's fine. <laughs> but um, I am stoked to share my snack box this month with you guys. It's a really good one. This month is Tochigi themed, and there's so many yummy looking things in here. Thank you to Sakurako for sponsoring this vlog. Love you guys. They have monthly Japanese snack subscription boxes with 20 Japanese snacks and also tea every month. That pairs really nicely with the snacks. Mm. Me and my sister both love tea, mm -hmm. so um, let's get the tea out of here and get that brewing. Okay, I'm so excited. And the tea, it's usually the box. They have this cool little booklet. Open it up, it tells you like about each snack in the box. And it tells you a lot about like Japanese customs as well. Oh, this is really is cool. cool. And like about the local areas that the snacks are from. And also allergens, so if you have any dietary restrictions, this box is really great because it does tell you the details of each snack. Like here you can see. Awesome. Yeah, so look through that mm. and see if there's a certain one you want to try. And each month also comes with one like kitchenware item. And I believe I read somewhere that this month is a fudoshiki, which is a wrapping cloth. And I think there is instructions in the booklet on how to do it. I've actually never tried it before. Do you think we can do it? Are you I good at stuff like this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this cloth is so pretty. I love it. Here's our tea. Yay, okay, let's brew this. Yum. Today we have a Jukusei Cha Yamagarashi. It's a green tea. Ooh. It smells so good. Okay, I'm gonna try the black sesame mochi. I'm gonna try this lemon thing. I love this edible rice paper. Have you ever had those you rabbit candies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've had those. Just like melts in your mouth. So satisfying yeah, why for does some it reason. Look tasty after having right? this rabbit like... thing. So this is the black sesame mochi. It's really soft. Ooh. It's so weird you can just eat the paper. <laughs> mm. Mm, I love the texture. It's so good. It's so chewy. I've never had black sesame mochi actually. It works nicely. A little bit of a peanut butter flavor. Mmm. That sounds mm. good actually. Quite sweet. Okay, my mm. sister's gonna try yokan. I love yokan. This is what's inside. We're gonna rip this open. Yeah. If you go to the konbini, 
Um, there's a section with traditional Japanese snacks. They always have yokan. It smells like lemon, um, like a lemon meringue pie or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Alright, so this is what it looks like. It's, it's in this cool package, so you can kind of like squeeze it out. Oh! It's not the texture I expected. Mm -hmm. It's like a really firm, mm, not really um, jello. It's so hard to explain. It's not as sticky as I expected, and it's like a nice, sweet, mild lemon flavor. Mm. It, it smells stronger than it tastes, I'd say. Interesting. Oh, I really want lemon meringue pie now. I know, me too. <laughs> That's something you can't find in Japan. I could just smell this mm. all day, honestly. Gekko Ame time. I'm excited Yum. for my sister to try these. It's fun that there's lots of like really traditional snacks mm -hmm. in this month's box. This is stuff I've never had before yeah. in my life. Different shapes. Oh, they're so cute! They're so cute. I've never seen shaped ones before. <gasps> Do you want the maneki neku? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're just really adorable. Right? I don't want to eat it. <laughs> eat it, eat uh. it. <laughs> Oh, they're so good. Mm, I mm -hmm. love them. Just like a roasted marshmallow. Yeah! Mm. Yeah! 100%. Oh my god, exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm. Bekoame. 10 mm. out of 10. Love them. Nice balance to the, the green tea. Mm-hmm. Mm. I just read the instructions for Fudoshiki wrapping. It's so simple. And Shay was saying that she wrapped her Christmas presents with this style. Okay, she's yeah. gonna show us because she's the pro. <laughs> but it's so easy, you guys, and it makes such a really pretty wrapping. You can use this for bento boxes or, yeah, like my sister did for gifts. Then you don't use single use wrapping paper. Yeah. You just buy some fabric and then you just keep using it every year. Put it diagonally. Put it on right? diagonally. Yeah. That's the weird part. Okay. And then basically, you just fold up two sides. And then you take these last sides and you can kind of neatly tuck it in if you want, but you don't have to. Like this. And then you just grab these and tie in a little bow. This one feels a little small for the box. I would use a slightly bigger mm. fabric. If you have a big enough one, you can probably get away That's with a so single cute. bow. But I love yeah. it. How adorable is that? Sakurako is partnering with local Japanese snack makers to continue to share Japanese culture and traditions that have been passed down for over 100 years. Experience Japan from the comfort of your own homes with Sakurako. Don't forget to use my code Charmeleon for $5 off your first Sakurako box. And they're also doing a giveaway for a free ticket to Japan at the moment. So get yourselves in on that. Good luck to all of you who enter. We're meeting my family for British pub food now. I don't know, I don't think it's British. My dad says it's like a British Can't style pub, but it, it's a Canadian pub. <laughs> like it's gonna be very different to what Chris is expecting. Well, it's pretty British, eh? Right? I, I don't like the food in though. It's nice. First microbrewery or something in, in Canada. In Canada. Mm. Craft yeah, brewery, maybe? Pints. Why is that? Really? And I'm gonna have two anyway. Oh, that sounds good. No, it's, it's not as bitter as Bale Ale, oddly enough. Mac and cheese, wow. Look, you got me. Wow, that's good. Fish and chips. You guys feel like that? By the UK, isn't it? This is halibut, though. The UK does cod, right? Oh my god. Halibut. I'll eat it for the halibut. Pearl for my oyster. <laughs> he was eating an oyster and he like chewed on something hard and it, he found this. What the hell? <laughs> That's insane. I've never heard of that happening before. You know, am I gonna find one? It's kind of shiny. Yeah. When you see it in the light, it's like it's a little shiny. That's crazy. Has that happened to any of you before? I've never heard of anybody finding a pearl on their oyster. My so I ordered a London Fog and we were looking up where this was invented because I found out recently that it's not a British thing. I always just assumed it was a British drink. And when I went to England, I tried to order one and nobody had any idea what I was talking about. But we just looked at it up now. It was made in Vancouver. And apparently it's like really local. So every time I mention 
watched it in videos, do you guys just have no idea what I'm talking about? It's an Earl Grey tea um, made into kind of like a latte with foamy milk and vanilla syrup. So it's like a sweet Earl Grey latte. Not British, FYI. So try and order it in England, they'll look at you like you're a weirdo. You can taste the disappointment. <laughs> Shit. Why? It's too sweet. Uh, still like it tastes sweet. like liquid sugar. Oh. Chris doesn't like any anything sweet, like his coffee or his tea. It's not bad, it's sweet. Oh, it's not bad. Is it supposed to snow tonight? They said yeah, it? two centimeters. Two centimeters. That's good. Possibly. Maybe our Christmas will have some snow. Yeah. That's right. That would be fun. Holy we are back from the pub now. I'm feeling so sleepy. <laughs> the jet lag is kicking in. It's always so bad when I come back to Canada. It usually takes me like four days to settle in. We did sleep decently last night though, so I'm not as bad as I usually am, but unfortunately I'm probably going to be pretty uh, jet lagged for my entire time here in Canada, but we should be at least on track by the time we get to LA and that's the most important for Chris's fight. But um, we're staying in an Airbnb. I'll give you guys a tour of it tomorrow. It's really messy at the moment because we've just got our luggage everywhere. <laughs> we have not had the energy to sort it out and clean things up yet. Tomorrow I'm going to get my hair colored, which is amazing because my roots are like three inches long. <laughs> it grew really fast since the last time I colored it for some reason. I cannot wait to get it a lot lighter. It's feeling really dark right now in this area, so. Very excited for that. I don't know exactly what I want to do to it, so I'm kind of just like browsing on Instagram for some inspo pics to show my hairstylist. She's amazing. If you are in the Victoria area and you're looking for a good hairstylist, her name's Caitlin and she's at Karma Salons in Langford, I think the location is. For color, I'm thinking quite light blonde, but still a little bit of blending uh, up in the roots. Maybe something like these. I don't know if this is too light or not. I'll talk to my stylist and see what she thinks. I also found this girl on YouTube that has really pretty hair. Uh, her roots are a bit darker, so that's also an option, but I want it to last as long as possible, so I don't know if I want that much root at the top. I'll probably go more for something like these with just a little bit of blending so it'll look lighter for longer. But yeah, that's the goal. We'll see how it turns out. Good night for now. Back from the hair salon, a lot blonder. I got her to do the highlights, I guess they are, all the way up to the root. So hopefully this will last a little bit longer this time and I won't have really dark roots for a while. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. I did um, a partial balayage, it was called. So really just like this top area of my hair. She didn't really do anything to the underneath. So it's still quite dark there, but yeah, I think it works. I don't really put my hair up often, so as long as we make the top later, it looks all right. We are just getting ready to go over to my family's house for Hungarian food for dinner today, which I'm stoked about. I hope Chris likes it. I picked up some of this from the hairdresser. I've been meaning to try this out because everybody says it's really great for damaged bleached hair like mine. I think Taylor tried it in a video and said she really liked it, so looking forward to it. Apparently it repairs the keratin chains in your hair that are broken by bleach color and chemical services. That would be lovely. Got a present from Charlotte. An early Christmas present. Merry Christmas. You deserve it. Definitely. Ah, it's LP. <laughs> Frankie goes to Hollywood. Uh, Hall and Apes. Ah, oh, that's cool. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> This looks really cool. Look at that. Yeah, some good ones. Yes, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Thank you very much. Okay. I love, I love the um, the effort they used to put into the artwork, which obviously we don't see anymore because mm. it's all MP3, right? Paprikash crumbly. <laughs> crumbly. <laughs> I can't speak Hungarian. My grandpa's teaching. Working on it. Whatever you want, you can use that or uh, rubber. Yeah, whatever. 